Righto then. Well, today on the recommendation of a fellow Linux YouTuber, English Bob, we're going to go ahead and take a look at Salient OS, which is a Arch Linux operating system designed primarily for usage for creative multimedia and gaming enthusiasts. And we're going to be going ahead and taking a look at that right now on the Linux Lounge. If you enjoyed this video, consider joining Odyssey, the freedom respecting alternative to YouTube. Links in the description. Indeed, as I said during the opening, today we're taking a look at Salient OS, which is an Arch Linux based operating system. Now, the first thing to say is English Bob recommended that I take a look at this distribution, and I've got to say, it seems like a pretty good recommendation, so thanks for that. Shout out to English Bob, and also shout out to the developer of this distribution, Silent Robot. I've seen them around quite a lot in the community, and a lot of their videos that they have on their channel have been really helpful, so also huge shout out to Silent Robot and thanks for making this awesome Linux distribution. Now indeed as I said this is an Arch based distribution and it's supposed to be quite easy to get installed and stuff. It's closer to vanilla Arch than say Manjaro or some other Linux distribution like that so maybe it won't be quite as easy but if you're looking for an entry point into Arch maybe this is the distribution for you. Now as you can see right now we are on the Salient OS website. The website is minimal and I don't have a problem with that at all in fact I like how minimal it is it looks very professional the only thing that i would have maybe liked to have seen is some screenshots and stuff but that's no big deal now if we go ahead and click this download button it takes us over to a sourceforge page and you can see here that we have a lot more information about the distribution as well as some screenshots so it tells us that it's an arch based rolling release distro or that sort of thing it tells us that we have the calamares installer so it's going to be quite easy to get installed it tells us that we've got dxvk lutra steam proton all all the works that makes it super easy to get gaming on Linux and we've got a list of features it's based on Arch Linux it supports BIOS or UEFI it's rolling release it has AUR support by default apparently it has PAMAC and yay installed and I think yay isn't maintained anymore so silent robot might want to change that out for something else you've got XFC or KD plasma in today's video we're going to take a look at the XFCE version because I'm just more familiar with XFCE you've got the calamar is Installer. It's optimized for gamers apparently. It's optimized for multimedia and you get real time audio configuration cool. You've got CUPS printer support, so you're going to be able to print stuff out right out of the box. Very handy. Quick menu access, Lutris and Steam installed by default, and system limits optimized, which I think is something that some games need or something. I'm not entirely sure. But with that said, let's move over to the operating system so we can go ahead and take a look at the installer. And indeed, here we are in Salient OS. Now as you can see, it's a really, really nice looking desktop, but we'll get onto that later. First, let's go ahead and get this installed. Now, for those of you who've used lots of different Linux distributions, you might recognize this installer as the Calamares installer. Lots of different Linux distributions use it, and with good reason. It's a really nice, simple installer. So, with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now, this is actually worth looking at because Salient OS has some features that other Linux distributions don't. It does add some things to Calamares that are quite useful. So, with that said, let's just go ahead and go through the install. As you can see, a lot of it is pretty standard stuff. You can easily set up swap so that's quite useful but we're not going to do that i've already put in my information interestingly enough there's a require strong passwords button now i can't tell if this is a new feature of calamares or if it's a salient os feature i don't know because i haven't used any distributions to install through calamares in quite a while but it is a cool feature to have but we're going to go ahead and leave that off because this is just a virtual machine we don't need a strong password next let's click next and now we have a list of pretty handy packages that we can go ahead and install right from the installer. So we can go ahead and install our NVIDIA drivers, our Intel drivers, AMD drivers. If we're running in VirtualBox, we can go ahead and install the VirtualBox guest editions and the VMware guest editions, I assume those are. Now I've got to say, this is a really really handy feature and it makes getting set up super easy so huge thumbs up to salient os for having all these things available to install right from the installer if we click next finally we can go ahead and click install install now and there we go salient os is installing and we've got a little welcome screen so that's quite cool sit back and relax while we install salient os on your computer and as you can see salient os is a beautiful and easy to use arch linux distribution and we can keep clicking through here and it'll give us different text salient os is 100% compatible with Arch Linux with additional AUR helpers, PAMAC and YAY. Once again, I think those do need replacing, but that's fine. Useful aliases to help you stay updated, cool. 
And there we go. Thank you for choosing Salient OS. We hope you enjoy the distribution for your daily use. And that's all the text that's in the installer, so I will be back once Salient OS has installed. And indeed, here we are in our fully set up Salient OS desktop. And as you can see, it looks really, really nice. Very modern minimalist. As I said during the opening, this is the XFCE version of Salient OS. So you have your top bar at the top. This is the XFCE panel with all your taskbar icons to the right and your whisker menu to the left with the rather nice Salient OS logo on it. And along the bottom, you have your dock. Now, I have a few complaints about this dock. The first of which is that it's handled entirely by XFCE. So if you're not familiar with XFCE, this isn't going to be the most intuitive thing in the world. So you might assume that to add an application to the dock, you just have to drag and drop it onto the dock. And on docks like Plank, that's exactly how that would work. But not so with the XFC dock we've got on here. Another complaint with it is the application selection in the dock is a little bit bizarre. You've got a file manager, which makes sense. A terminal, that also makes sense. Settings, that makes sense. But then you've got a desktop background and icon and menu configuration tool. Now, I don't know how often you're gonna need to access that, but I think most people would probably assume that you just do it by right clicking the desktop or something. So I'm not really sure why it needs to be there, but that's a little bit of a weird choice. And you also have Lutris and Steam, which I suppose if you're a gamer, those do make sense to have in the dock. But I have to wonder, where exactly is the web browser and stuff? Surely that's the most used program on any computer, so you really want to have that in the dock, especially since it's not immediately obvious how to change the applications that are in the dock. I don't know, but I suppose if you have any issues with it, it's just a Google search away, and this is arguably less bloated than Plank and other docks like that, so there are ups and downs to it, I guess. Now, I think what we should do next is take a look at the applications which come with Salient OS. Now, I have very mixed feelings about the applications that come with Salient OS. There are some really good choices that are made, but also there are some really bizarre choices that are made too. I think the bizarre choices are that there's some programs that are bundled that I don't think most people will use. And there's some programs that I think most people will use that are oddly missing. And there's also some quite bizarre choices in programs. The one good thing that I will say though, is a lot of stuff that people are going to want to use is here ready to go, ready to use. And I've actually learned about some programs I didn't know about as a result of looking through Salient OS, so that's cool. But I'll go ahead and raise my complaints as we go through the applications. The one thing that I will say is that the ISO size of Salient OS is two and a half gigs, if I remember correctly. Now, that's not too much by any means. That will fit on any USB stick, and I don't think that storage will be an issue with Salient OS, but it is just something to be aware of. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look through the applications. So we have our rather nice whisker menu here, which is quite nicely themed. So let's go ahead and start with our accessories. You've got an application finder, archive manager, bulk rename, a catfish file search, all kind of standard XFCE stuff, character map, clipboard manager. We've got Compton, which that's for all the desktop effects and stuff, and it seems to work really well. So for instance, if we go ahead and open up the file manager, start dragging it around, you can see that it becomes transparent. And I've got to say that looks really nice. And of course, this will will also remove screen tearing from some devices and stuff too, so it's very useful to have in XFCE. You've got Disk, which that makes sense. You've got Cavantum for some reason. Now, Cavantum is a theme manager for KDE, and I'm really not sure what it's doing in an XFCE distribution. That's quite bizarre. Light DM, GTK greeter settings, so you can configure your login screen. You've got Micro, which I can't actually quite remember what this is. I believe it's a terminal text editor. Now, I believe this is the only simple text editor on the system. And I've got to be honest, I would have much rather had mousepad or something like that. But I suppose that's a fine choice. If we keep going, you get nitrogen, which is where the wallpapers are managed. And as you can see, by default, you get a lot of wallpapers. So let's just go ahead and quickly look through some of these. And for some reason, nitrogen has crashed. That's quite strange. So let's just go ahead and use the standard XFC wallpaper utility, because I'm reasonably certain that that won't crash. And as you can see, these wallpapers are really nice. And since the panel and dock are transparent, each wallpaper fits really well. So there's a lot of interesting varied choices here. There's even like Arch Linux wallpapers, which that's pretty cool. There's a lot of quite gamery wallpapers, which that makes sense given the fact that this is a gamer operating system. There's the default wallpaper, which I think was a really good choice. There's some wallpapers that I would maybe say aren't necessarily appropriate for a Linux distribution. And 
and maybe you should leave it to the user to download this sort of thing, but it's nothing too bad by any means. And I do like the variety and the fact that these wallpapers are quite gamery. The only thing that I would wonder is what exactly is the copyright on all of these images? I can't imagine that any copyright holders will go after Salient OS, but it is just something that I would wonder about maybe. So do you know what? I'm going to leave it as this wallpaper. That's quite cool. So if we keep going through the operating system, after Nitrogen, you get a notes program, which cool, passwords and keys. So you can go ahead and manage your passwords and keys. That's cool. If we keep going, you get PyCom, which I believe is a fork of Compton. So I'm not quite sure why both are here. And it's actually quite difficult for me to tell which is being used, but okay. Piper, which I believe is for managing gaming mice, which that's a slightly interesting choice, but okay. You got a screenshot tool, sensor viewer, software token, Stacer, which is a Linux system optimizer and monitoring tool. So consider it as being kind of like a task manager plus maybe. You can go ahead and optimize your system. So I think that this is going to be something that's quite useful for gamers and it is indeed open source and it looks like a very nice program. So if we keep going, you get a task manager, which similar to Stacer, but this is the standard XFCE one. So you kind of have two options there. And if we keep going, you get the Thunar file manager, which is the default XFCE one. You get Vim and you get Wine Tricks, which for gamers, Wine Tricks is very useful. If we keep going in developer, you get Meld. Now, Meld is an interesting choice because what meld is is it lets you compare two files now i don't exactly know how often the average user is going to use that but i suppose it probably doesn't take up too much space you've got micro which is the terminal text editor we looked at a minute ago you've got sublime text 3 dev now that's a little bit of a weird choice i'm going to be honest i don't exactly know how many people who are going to be using this operating system will be interested in a programming text editor but it's here, and if you want to use it, it's pre-installed for you. Under games, you've got Game Hub, which is a game launcher. You've got Lutris, which is the kind of the most popular game launcher for Linux, and for good reason, it's very good. And you've got Steam. So all of these do make sense. The only criticism that I might make here is that Steam is not open source software, and I wouldn't necessarily want to push people into using non-free software by default. I would probably leave that choice up to the user. But since this is a gaming operating system, it does make sense. Under graphics, you've got a document scanner and a document viewer, both good choices. You've got Krita, which given the fact that this is a content creation distribution as well as a gaming distribution, I think that Krita is a good choice. And in my opinion, it is better than the GNU image manipulation program. You've got Nomax for your image viewer, which is a reasonably good choice. You've got a color picker, which is very handy for any creative professionals out there. Under internet, you've got a fair amount of stuff. You've got a server browser, which that makes sense. You've got Chromium. I'm not a big fan of including Chromium by default. I would rather encourage people to use Firefox, but there you go. You've got Discord, which I am going to be honest, I'm not a fan of that choice at all. For one, I'm not in favor of bundling non-free software with distributions by default, especially not software that disrespects user freedoms as much as Discord does. And I'm going to be honest, this would be a really good time to bundle something like Element or Telegram or any number of other messaging services to start introducing users to those programs because I'm going to be honest something like Mumble or Element would work just as well as Discord as well as respect user freedoms and I think that Discord is one of those things that if the user wants it they should probably go out and find it for themselves but that is just my choice and this is a gamer distribution so I suppose most gamers who are going to be using it probably use Discord already but I don't like that it's bundled by default. You also interestingly enough get Firefox so I'm going to be honest, I would have probably have ditched Chromium and just included Firefox, but I suppose if there's a site that's not playing nice with Firefox, you do have Chromium here as well to try it again in Chromium. But you also once again get Steam, which that makes sense. Under Multimedia, you get Audacity, which is a good program for any creative professionals out there. GUC View, which I believe is a webcam viewer, also handy for creative professionals and really just anyone else. You've got OBS Studio, which is a nice program for streaming. You've got Pulse Audio. You have the QTE test utilities and stuff. You've got the simple screen recorder, which is a great screen recorder. It might be a little bit unnecessary given we also have OBS, but simple screen recorder is much easier to get to grips with, so I understand why it was included. And you also get VLC. Personally, I prefer MPV, but I understand that VLC is much easier to get to grips with. I should also say that I find it to be a little bit weird that there's no video editor included by default. 
Given the fact that there are programs like Audacity, Simple Screen Recorder, and that sort of thing included by default, I think that most people who would be using all of these programs would probably also want to edit a video at some point or another. Now, I wouldn't expect something as heavy as Caden Live to be included by default, but maybe something lightweight like PityV might be a good inclusion. Under Office, you get a dictionary and a document viewer. Now, I'm going to be honest, given everything else that's bundled, it does confuse me why exactly LibreOffice isn't here, because I think that most people are going to want an Office suite at some point or another, so maybe in a future release of Salient OS, I would like to see Libre office and finally under settings you've got all sorts of options for wine yes wine is bundled by default very handy for gamers generally i would advise against bundling wine the general purpose linux distribution but since this is targeted at gamers that's a good choice and you've got all the other standard xfc settings and under system you've got conky which is for desktop widgets and stuff which is cool to have you've got grub customizer so you can go ahead and configure your grub screen by default which is cool and that is about it. So all in all, my conclusion to this Linux distribution review is this. Salient OS is a very, very nice Linux distribution. I think it makes Arch easy to get to grips with. It's very visually pleasing out of the box, so it doesn't need any configuration like that or anything. And I think if you're a content creator or gamer who's looking to make the switch over to Arch Linux, I think that you would be hard pressed to do better than this. Because to be honest, I do like this better than Manjaro and other similar distributions like that. But as much as I like Salient OS, and as much as I feel bad for criticizing it because of just how cool Silent Robot is, I do have to say that I do have a few criticisms of this distribution. For one, the default configuration is, although very visually pleasing and very usable, that does have some weird choices that need polishing up here and there. The application selection is a little bit bizarre. There's some things that are missing. There's some things that just shouldn't be there. There's some things that need changing around. I think for most people, it's going to be fine. And if you know how to use Arch Linux, well, then chances are you're going to go ahead and be able to install whatever you want anyway. And this is a very easy to use Linux distribution. You know, you can do most things from the graphic graphical user interface. So for instance, you can upgrade and install programs as you see fit from a GUI. So that does mean that any programs that you don't want to use or any programs that you do want to use are going to be very easy to add and remove, but it is just something to be aware of. I also don't necessarily like how this distribution kind of props up non-free software, especially in the case of Discord. But once again, I think a lot of people who are going to be using this won't mind, but if you do mind, then that is just something to be aware of. But as much as I've complained, I think that my overall opinion on Salient OS is favourable. I would definitely recommend that you go out and give it a look. And I do hope that in the future, Salient OS improves. Because I've got to say, this is a great Linux distribution with a lot of potential. But with that said, that's it for today's video. I thank you for watching it, and I will see you in the next one.